It's always a good day when a telescope shows up at the house. Yes, it is a good day when this shows up. It doesn't matter what happened the rest of your day, this happens and it's a good day. So I've been trying to look for budget gear that I can recommend to you under $200. And this particular model has been recommended to me by many of you out there, including some of you who have been around the block for a while. And those people also have not been as shy in addressing its shortcomings. More on that soon. But here you get a terrific bargain. It's a three inch reflector on a complete equatorial mount, a red dot finder, two eyepieces, and the whole thing is only $119, and Orion even shipped it for free. It's amazing they got all that stuff in a package this compact, but for now, let's open up the carton and let's get to it. So here's the unboxing, and I've assembled these Orion EQ1 mounts before. This is the smallest of their floor standing equatorial mounts, and one thing that struck me this time is just how many little sub boxes there are inside. Look at that, there's the optical tube. It comes well wrapped. One concern I had, you'll see me undo the tube ring here. That is a piece of plastic. Uh, they used to make those out of metal. Um, it's The plastic's a little bit thin and brittle. A little bit of a concern there. Here's the legs of the tripod. And here's me unboxing the equatorial head. This appears to be the same one that they've always used. And here's me screwing on the counterweight shaft, like this. So this is the most frustrating part. You have to thread that bolt between the uh, tripod head and the legs. And sometimes it feels like you need about three hands to do that. This is frustrating too. They're little tiny screws you see me struggling with with the eyepiece tray that also acts as a spreader bar. Once you me attaching the counterweight here. And again, here's the plastic tube ring being attached by two metal screws. And the final part is to put on the optical tube. And there it is. So I'd be remiss if I didn't point out what I feel is an excellent set of instructions and operating manual, even though I didn't even use it until after I'd assembled the whole thing. But not only does it go through the assembly instructions, but it goes through collimation and what to look for. And uh, I think it's really good as an operating manual. Also, package comes with a moon map. This is really nice. It's laminated. And it gives you the correct image map as well as the mirror image map. I'm going to be using this. And we're back. It's about two months later. I know it's only been a few seconds for you, but it's two months for me. So I've had some time to play with this telescope. And well, first of all, what is it? It's an astronomical telescope designed for looking up at the night sky. There is a three inch mirror at the back of the tube here which directs light to a secondary mirror, which is angled, and it moves the image out to the eyepiece, which is here. This is where you look. And to change magnifications, you change eyepieces. So let me give you the bad news first. The mount. <laughs> Both inexperienced and experienced observers alike talk about this mount. So first of all, let's go through this. Why is this thing shaped the way it is? I imagine there are some beginners watching this and seeing this contraption. Why does it shape like this? Well, it turns out that all of the stars in the sky appear to rotate in an arc around the North Star. That's if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. So it stands to reason that if we point this telescope at the North Star, we should be able to track the motion of the sky using just this motion here. Very common thing that happens. You go outside, you find something like the moon and it looks great. And then you run inside and get the family. And by the time everybody gets their shoes and their clothes on and they go outside, the moon is gone. Well, if you've done a proper alignment here, you should be able to reacquire the moon using just this motion here. This axis here, depending on how accurate your polar alignment is, you shouldn't have to touch this one quite as much. 
So there are two axis locks here. They're different on every equatorial mount. On this one, it's two plastic wing nuts. And if you loosen this, you should be able to locate any object in the sky like this. What you want to try to avoid is, let's say I want to try to look at something out towards you. Resist the temptation to do <laughs> this, okay? This doesn't actually do anything for you. And in fact, if you don't align this towards the North Star or towards the South Pole, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, this type of mount actually works against you. So don't do that. Let's say this, we are properly polar aligned here. And let's say I want to look at something out towards you. I would loosen these locks and just do this. And again, if I want to track, I'll just turn this knob. If you think about it, the mount does not know or care where the telescope is pointed. It's just going to keep tracking. If I want to look in the other direction, I go like this. If I want to look south, I can do this. I can access any point in the sky using this equatorial mount. Okay, so in theory, everything's fine, right? Well, in theory, yes. In practice, this is a $119 telescope. You're getting an optical tube and a mount for that price. We can't expect that this is going to be a precision piece of scientific equipment, and that's not what you get here. So first of all, these cables. I have never liked this arrangement, and this is one of the worst executions of this concept I've ever seen. So the cables are held on by this set screw, and what it does is it grabs the shaft and you turn it. The problem is, and again, this is one of the worst ones I've ever seen, no matter how much you tighten down on this knob, they come loose within a few minutes. It will do this to you all night long. Every few minutes, you are going to want to start throwing things. So I've had people tell me a number of solutions. They'll lock tight these or they'll come up with some other solution. You know, I just don't like these cables flopping around a lot. So what I do is I get a couple of these things. These are um, radio control knobs. I used to tell people just to go to Radio Shack and get these, but you know. So these control knobs have a set screw in them, an Allen keys, and the good ones actually have two set screws in them and they'll grab on here really tightly and they won't fall off. So Pardon me while I change these things out. Okay, so we've gotten rid of those awful cables and we've replaced them with these control knobs. So I notice the scope looks a lot cleaner now and despite these knobs being smaller than the cables, I actually find these things easier to locate in the dark because I know they're always going to be down near the mount sometime. You don't have these cables flopping around. Okay, so I would say that just doing this one modification has reduced I'm probably close to a third of the frustration I had with this equatorial mount. And while we're on the subject of bad news, yes, the mount does have some flexor in it, everything with tightened down. It does tend to move a little bit. The whole thing only weighs 11 pounds and the stance of this mount is quite narrow. You'll notice most equatorial mounts, the stance is quite wider. You can compensate that for that by hanging a bag of something here, either sand or cat litter. That's an old photographer's trick. So the red dot finder is okay. It's a little bit cheap and it uses a non-standard uh, mounting system. So if something were to happen to it, you might be stuck for a while before you get that thing squared away. And finally, the focuser here is a very high profile. That means the focuser tube is quite long. And when you focus on an object, the end of the focuser tube actually protrudes into the light path of the telescope. Okay, now that we've dumped all over this poor thing, what's the good news? Well, the optical tube is really nice. This is a three inch F9.2, a little bit unusual F ratio here. I think the reason they did that is to make the focal length come out to exactly 700 millimeters. Once I got everything with the mount squared away, really nice. I mean, I was splitting double stars with this. I was looking at the moon. I was doing deep sky in the winter time and in the springtime. I got all the winter clusters, the Orion Nebula, the Pleiades, easy. All of those clusters in Auriga were easy as well. I got M81 and M82, and the dimmest things I saw were M65 and M66. Those are the two galaxies in Leo. Not bad for a $100 or thereabouts telescope. As an intellectual exercise, I also took a capture of the moon to get this image here. And as with other images of the moon I've taken with inexpensive telescopes lately, this was not fun. In fact, words almost don't describe how unfun this was, but I was determined to get it done. Tracking was out of the question, even though I 
can technically track using this knob here, but with the camera in place, just even touching any part of this would make the view jiggle and shake outside the field of view, and it was out of the question. So I kept the capture short, took three separate unguided, untracked images and stacked them together, melded them, to them together in Photoshop, and I got this. So if you're interested in this telescope, Orion does have a couple of variations. First of all, they sell the same optical tube in an Alt-As mount. I typically don't like those inexpensive Alt-As mount. You can usually spot them with that chrome bar on the side that's supposed to be a slow-mo control. Those things tend not to work very well. They also sell this same mount with a 70 millimeter F10 refractor. Notice it has the same 700 millimeter focal length as this tube here, if refractors are your thing. Other thing to notice is I bought this one for $119. The price wanders around a bit. Uh, I don't know why I've seen it as low as 109. I've seen it as high as $129. So keep watching if you're not finding the price that you like. Okay, so what are we to make of this? You know, when I bought this thing, I was really hoping I'd discovered a hidden gem. It isn't quite that. I feel like I'm reviewing two products here. There's the mount and the optical tube. If I was just reviewing the mount, I'm not sure I would, I would be giving this thing a positive recommendation. I think I'm on the fence with that. The optical tube, however, much better than I expected. So on balance, I'm gonna give this thing a mild recommendation, provided you're willing to put the work in to work through the quirks of the equatorial mount. So in closing, I'll state again, this is a mild recommendation, and of course, it is always a good day when a telescope arrives at your house. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.